So inspiration is a powerful force. It's a force that can propel a teenager to push past her limitations and create an artificial neural network that can make breast cancer diagnostics quicker, cheaper, less invasive, and most importantly, more accurate. See, I was always that kid who never outgrew the why phase. But it wasn't until I found science that I found my answers and more questions, because as we all know, with science, the more you know, the more you wonder. Then, when I was in middle school, I was taking this fascinating course on futuristic thinking, and I came across the concept of artificial intelligence, the fact that computers could transcend human knowledge. I was enthralled. I went home, I bought a coding textbook, I became a frequent visitor to all those internet forums, and I decided that I was going to learn to code. Then, when I was in 10th grade, I found another source of inspiration. My cousin was diagnosed with breast cancer, and I saw firsthand the impact this disease really has on a woman and her family. I found out my cousin wasn't alone. In fact, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer. I was inspired to get involved and make a difference, so I started researching everything I could find about breast cancer. And I came across public domain data from the University of Wisconsin that was based on fine needle aspirates. Fine needle aspirates are these great tests. They're very non-invasive, they're cheap, and they're quick. However, they're wildly inconclusive, so a lot of doctors refuse to use them. My goal was to create a program that could really revive the fine needle aspirates and provide a tool for doctors to use in the analysis of these fine needle aspirates. In science, having that question, that goal, is always a huge first step. However, being a teenager trying to create a neural network out of your bedroom doesn't make creating something of such a scale an easy task. I want to make it clear, I'm not some whiz kid. I wasn't born with a beaker in my hand. For me, my journey in science has been all about sheer willpower and determination. I started by breaking the project down into digestible phases. I spent an entire year just researching breast cytology and optimizing commercially available neural networks so I didn't have to code anything. I found that even the best art artificial neural networks that were already out there only had erratic success. So I decided that I wanted to move forward with coding my own network in Java. So, naturally, I researched everything I could. I spent months upon months researching, and I decided to create a backpropagation neural network. I was really excited. I dove in, and my first attempt was not as excited as I was. There were thousands of errors of code, more errors than code, and I ended up scrapping the entire thing. So I went back to the drawing board. I did further research to make sure I really understood what was going on. I walked through some tutorials, videos, etc., And I decided to try again. The attempt compiled. I was so excited. But it proved to be solidly worse than flipping a coin at diagnosing breast cancer. In fact, it got worse as it quote unquote learned. But the great thing about science is you learn just as much from those flopped experiments as you do from your successful ones. So at that point, I kind of took a step back, and I did a lot of soul searching to figure out what went wrong. This was certainly a time where I was doing constant pondering and wondering if I could even create this neural network without going off to college and taking more advanced computer science courses. But then one day, it dawned on me. You see, the second implementation, although it compiled, was very object-oriented. So each node was kind of doing its own thing, and the program wasn't working well as a cohesive unit. So I decided for my third attempt, I would make it more of a team effort, as well as have three novel different implementations. One, I would change the inconclusive logic. Two, I would have heavy malignant weighting. And three, I was going to make sure that the network was able to diagnose cancer patients correctly, for sure. The network had success. I was over the moon. It actually proved to be 99.1% sensitive to malignancy. And I think the reason it had so much success is I was able to learn from those original experiments. However, even though I had seen it have success once, there was this nagging voice that wondered, is this a fluke? So I ran it again and a third time, and when my results were confirming the prior results, I decided that the network was in fact working. So I turned my attention to another pr problem. You see, neural networks learn based on their experiences and mistakes. So in theory, as they get more experiences, they should learn better. I decided to run a series of 7.6 million trials, setting my alarm every three to four hours, day in and day out, so that I could determine the impact that having more data would have on the network. And what was really exciting is every day I could see my persistence paying off. 
because the line showing the correlation between training success and sample size was getting clearer, and the inconclusive rate was going down. So at this point, I determined that I needed more data. And the way I decided to get that more data was by deploying my program to the cloud, because the cloud, which we just heard about, is this incredible elastic entity that can scale to support usage by every hospital in the world. In order for my program to be ready for cloud delivery, I really had to focus on making a better user interface and also making it quicker to avoid timeout limits. After my program was deployed as cloudforcancer.appsot.com, I actually got to go to the Google Science Fair and have had this incredible platform that I've been able to use to share my research with the world. I recently got data from Lincoln Al Medical Center, which is a hospital in Philadelphia, and so far, the program has diagnosed all of those samples cor correctly, proving it can work with multiple institutions. I also recently built a REST service, and so I'll be getting 400 dubious samples from an institute in Italy so that I can see how my network does against those. I'm really excited about the way the neural network's working, and my primary goal is to get it into real hospitals, helping real patients, saving real lives. But I've also been curious about whether these same sort of tactics can apply to other cancer diagnostics. Specifically, I have an interest in MLL leukemia, because MLL leukemia is a very aggressive form of leukemia with a very poor prognosis, and there's really no good treatment option. So I decided to see if Cloud for Cancer could apply to that. It took 11 attempts to get it right. I ended up creating a hybrid neural network. But what's been really exciting is it's been able to diagnose all of the MLL samples in the data set correctly. In addition, I'm working with genetic expression profiles. So it's actually been able to go through and determine certain proteins that may be candidates for drug targeting in the future so that those prognosis rates can go up. For me, my journey in science has very much been about finding what inspires me and then having the courage to pursue it even through failure. Um, I'm going to be a co college freshman soon, and as, and as I go off to dual major in computer science and biology, I plan on living by the phrase, persistence pays off, which means never give up. Because if I hadn't had the persistence to push through this experiment, there's no way I'd be standing here at CERN talking about my invention that could someday be in hospitals. We, as young curious minds, are facing a lot of challenges. From finding the cures to cancer, to creating alternative energy sources, to unraveling the mysteries behind particle physics, together with hard work and passion, we can truly revolutionize the world around us. And to me, that's what's exciting about science. Thank you so much.